So Fluence AI 61W powered stand mount speakers just came across my desk and I feel compelled to share my experience with all of you. I usually don't review powered speakers too often since I am a fan of having complete creative control over my system uh, by adding the amplification and DAC of my choice. However, I heard Fluence makes high value, high quality products and I do use powered speakers on my desktop to save some space. So let's find out how they did. Stay tuned. The Fluence AI 61W powered stand mounts are a lot bigger than I expected. From the photos I saw online, I thought they would be just a tad bit smaller. Uh, I'm tight on desk space as it is. However, I needed some fresh new speakers to listen to music while I work at my desk. So here we are. I wanted them in white, uh, since that's my general theme. <laughs> and uh, the bamboo wrapped around the enclosure gives it a nice contrast. So I, I totally dig the aesthetics. Let's find out what kind of tech we are working with, shall we? At their $399 price point, my expectations weren't out of this world. I knew I would be dealing with conservative features and just a modest experience in general. However, I do always hope for the best. Fluence doesn't claim these to be high-end audiophile speakers. They kept it real and I appreciate that. Sometimes it's refreshing to experience transparency in this industry, so kudos. Uh, even if it's just for a small moment in time, I do appreciate when companies just tell it how it is. So at the front of the speaker, you see a six and a half inch driver to cover your bass and mid-range area. The crossover is set to 2800 kilohertz, allowing the one inch silk soft dome tweeter to handle the upper frequencies. A control knob in the front can adjust the volume, toggle through the inputs, and turn the unit on or off. You can also see a small LED light indicating the source and when the volume maxes out. Inside the box came a remote control that gives you the option of tone control, LED brightness, power, volume, you know, the usual suspects. The remote is simple uh, and has a cool look to it. Also in the box came some batteries that are already inside the remote. Thank you for that. There's also a power cable and uh, straight wire speaker ca cables to connect the two speakers together. Uh, luckily they came with a five-way binding post, so I used some thicker cables with banana plugs because that's just way easier. Making our way to the back, you'll notice that this is a bass reflex designed and is rear ported. The control speaker is the right speaker, uh, as far as to the right. <laughs> And to my knowledge, there isn't a way to change that as we've seen with other power speakers in the past. Not that this is an issue for me in particular. However, depending on where your electrical outlets are located, it could be nice to have this feature that we just missed out on this set. This unit comes with a class D 120 watt amplifier and it, with a reported 60 watts RMS per channel. It has RCA inputs for all your analog components or you also have the option of Bluetooth in case your buddies come over and you wanna, you know, play some of their tunes. It also comes with optical in case you want to use these with your TV instead of a sound bar. And it comes with a USB-C input in case there's a need for a USB-C input. It has a sub out, guys, with an 80 hertz low pass frequency cutoff, which I appreciate and do love. It has a power button back here too, in case you want to power it on or off completely. However, the most remarkable feature of these speakers, in my honest opinion, is this incredibly cool Canadian flag. Americans think they are patriotic. However, I'm not convinced until I see American flags on our American speakers. Canada lets you know, Canada lets you know what's up. Let's go ahead and measure these guys to see if uh, the reported frequency response of 32 hertz to 20 kilohertz is an accurate assessment of the speaker. Let's go see how they did. 
So I performed an in-room measurement as I have been doing lately. The measurement itself reminds me of our beautiful Rocky Mountains over here. There are a lot of dips and spikes that have nothing to do with room acoustics. The base waterfalls at 50 hertz and the top end starts to decline around 14 kilohertz which surprises me because these are relatively bright speakers. I was expecting more linearity with the, the top end, but this measurement was performed with their tone control set to neutral. So this is what the speaker does natively. Very far from the reported 32 Hertz on the low end guys, unfortunately, uh, not an attractive measurement whatsoever. I do hope they sound better than they measured. Fluence suggests 10 hours of burn-in to get these speakers where they need to be. So I let them run before measurements and the official evaluation just to give them the benefit of the doubt. However, out of the box, I thought they sounded fine. I felt that the bass was present enough to be recognized. Not too boomy though, nah, not too much bass. Uh, the mid-range and top end were a bit forward, which can be bandaged with the trusty tone control on the remote. The uh, soundstage was I'd say adequate, and they imaged okay when presented with music that tested their resolve, like some tunes from one of my favorites, Yoshi Horikawa. Uh, the detail was all right, and they performed well for where they are priced. Would I put these up against some passive speakers I have uh, reviewed and heard around the same price point, like the Q Acoustics 3030i or the Triangle Bro 3s? Probably not. I think at that point it would just be worth spending a little extra and getting an external amplifier and going that route. But if you are at this price point specifically, and this is the budget that cannot be tampered with, then these would be fine, I think, for casual listening, which is what I think they were meant for in the first place. So who is meant to own these? Who did Fluence make these powered stand mounts for? Well, I would say the everyday guy or gal who wants an affordable speaker to listen to their music on their desktop plugged into a computer, um, a bedroom as a sound bar replacement solution, or you know, even the kitchen to you know jam out while you're cooking. Uh, these can also be an excellent solution for someone who is just starting out, a youngster, or just someone that has never done hi-fi before uh, and wants to save a little money. These come with an amplifier inside, which is very cool. I don't think Fluence intended these to be high-end contenders since they already have offerings in that upper echelon. Uh, this is a borderline cheap entry-level speaker uh, that offers a decent value, you know? It's, it is what it is. <laughs> Had these been seven or $800 speakers, we might be having a different conversation altogether. If you wanna pick up a pair of these and try them out, I will leave a link in the description below. Thank you all for joining me. If you're already subscribed, it is greatly appreciated. If you're on Facebook and want to interact with me and others with like-minded outlooks on audio, I encourage you to join the Hi-Fi Community Facebook group. We are steadily growing and would love to have you. I have the biggest audio-inspired t-shirt shop online. Unfortunately, this is not one of the t-shirts. Licensing is expensive. Uh, I do sell tees, hoodies, and other merch to help support the channel, and it's my only avenue to support the channel. So I think you should check it out, buy some stuff, and offer ideas for future designs. If you are new to Audio Architects altogether and like it so far, I urge you to watch some of my other videos to see if you know my channel's the right fit for you and if you vibe with my style of videos. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing and joining me on my voyage in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me today. Take care and I'll see you very soon. It does look good though. I'll stop touching it now.